Thank you. Uh, I now recognize um, Ms. Moran. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate each one of you talking about this very important uh, subject today. Dr. Gillen, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Texas State Technical College, if you don't mind. Uh, you mentioned performance-based funding as a way to provide incentives for colleges to give high-value education to students. And you point to the funding structure used by TSTC as a potential model for policymakers to follow if performance funding were to be incorporated into the Higher Education Act. Can you discuss a little bit more about how this model works in Texas and what lessons this subcommittee can learn from that model? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the Texas State Technical College, it's a, it's a public college, uh, from primarily vocational. Um, and unlike almost all other public uh, universities and colleges in the country, it doesn't receive appropriations up front. So it doesn't get a, a check from the state government. Uh, instead, uh, what, the, what the state does is it tracks all of Texas State Technical College students for several years after they graduate. It then calculates the value added earnings uh, so, the, so the difference between what they, what they think those students would have earned before attending the college and what they earn afterwards. It then calculates the uh, increase in tax revenue for the state of Texas, and then it shares a portion of that tax revenue with the, uh, with the school. So that's, that's how Texas State Technical College is funded. It, it educates students, those students then generate more tax revenue, and some of that tax revenue is given to the state, uh, almost as like a performance bonus uh, in lieu of state appropriations. Uh, so this is a, this is a very, innovative and great model. It's led to really great changes uh, within Texas State Technical College and the, and the state. Uh, everybody in Texas is, is very, very pleased with this. The, the, the cities that don't have a campus want one. Uh, the cities that do have a campus are thrilled to, to have one. Um, and so, so this, is, this, is a, this is a great model. And it, it, uh, it also changed the culture uh, of the administration of the university. So, Whenever, whenever you think about a traditional college, one of the hardest things to do is get rid of a department, right? Uh, get rid of a major, get rid of a certificate program, because uh, it, it creates a lot of controversy. Uh, and that's not the case at Texas State Technical College, uh, because they, they're looking at the data for, their, for the earnings outcomes of their students, and if that data is not sufficient to justify the program, they just quietly close the program and redirect those resources elsewhere. Uh, and so that, that cultural shift is just a huge, huge uh, benefit, I think. It sounds like part of that culture is really a culture of internalizing this notion of accountability, self-accountability, both at the professor and the administration level and also at the departmental level. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, Texas State Technical College is definitely held accountable. If, they're, if their student, students don't get good jobs, uh, they, don't, they don't get paid. Uh, which is completely the opposite of the way that, that we fund most colleges in this country. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on this committee talking about substance of policies or substance of things we don't like being taught at, in either early education or uh, institutions of higher education. But, uh, but in truth, the proof is in the pudding. Ultimately, we're developing individuals to go out in the workplace and to be beneficial uh, parts of the workplace. And so this kind of model reinforces that, that Hey, look. Let's let's see what kind of teaching leads to what kind of outcomes. Uh, do you see any other institutions of higher learning that are using this kind of model? So there's a lot of tinkering, I would say. I, I, I'm only aware of Texas State Technical College using this this exact model. Um, there are a lot of performance-based funding programs throughout the country that sort of mimic the structure. Um, but the, the, the difference is this is all of Texas State Technical College's funding, whereas for these performance-based funding, it's typically a rounding error. Um, so the, there's, there's a hint of, of this model spreading, but it, it, hasn't, it hasn't really spread. And, and I want to switch gears and ask uh, Mr. Horn real quick about a different topic, because I'm, I'm a father of four. I've got two seniors in high school that are looking to go to college, so we're looking at a whole lot of finances and a whole lot of cost of colleges. Uh, I know firsthand how difficult college shopping process can be. Uh, how come colleges are not, uh, how come we're not viewing it as a long-term investment and 
we're not pricing it that way and we're not uh, holding our colleges and universities accountable for the transparency for the cost of certain programs compared to their return on their investment. Can you well, speak to that? Sure, and first, good luck as you go through the process. But uh, second, opacity right, works in favor of the colleges in many cases. It obscures, it creates a social or emotional feeling of, oh, I got a scholarship when in fact they're net tuition discounting as they try to maximize uh, their revenue in their class and things of that nature. And I would argue it's a short-sighted part of the model as well because it's undermined trust uh, in the institutions as the price tag has gone up over time. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you all to your, for your information today. Yield back.